Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Something a bit different for me today. I'd like to show you how I created this birthday card with a really textural feel to it. It's suitable for, well, I made it for a young boy who absolutely loves his football. It's really simple though because you don't need any specialist dies or anything. I've simply used a couple of nesting dies. I've woven some string for the net there um, and used plain cardstock. So I'm going to show you step by step exactly how I put this together. Like I say, it was a quick last minute card. Um, we kind of forgot to buy one. So I said, that's fine. I'll make one. I'm a card maker. Um, this ended up actually taking me around about an hour to put together. Um, but I was figuring it all out as I went. So hopefully you can do it much quicker. And it's really good to have an idea in the background if you ever do need a quick card like this. So let's get started with what we're going to need. So I've already said plain cardstock. I've got white green black and then I've also got some pale blue and I've got myself a dark blue envelope as well um, oh and some dark blue cardstock for the sentiment or the name I've then used a very small hexagon nesting die and a larger circle nesting die as well and these can vary in size depending on how large you want your football and how large or small you want the hexagons on there this kind of this one inch compared to about a four inch circle was around about the right sort of scale I've got some black ink there I've got some yarn so this is just like some sort of crochet yarn in white um, a pokey tool you're going to need something like a self-healing mat as well some black ink and some brown ink and I have used my textures brush strokes stamps as well I've used the inks here for kind of the mud splatters there too okay so oh you'll also need a darning needle as well mustn't forget the darning needle okay let's get started so I cut myself that four inch circle and lots of one inch black hexagons uh, just all plain cardstock. I actually used my scraps up for this and I folded the black cardstock as I cut it, die cut it. So I was cutting through two layers at a time just to cut more at once. I'm kind of using the spare hexagons here without any glue on to position because you want a one black hexagon and then all white ones around it. So the first couple are a little bit harder to place. So I'm just placing dry ones here so I can work out where to put the next one with glue on. Um, once you get the knack of this it takes no time at all so I stuck down that one removed the white ones and then I thought Do you know what? it looks a bit plain so I decided to take a black fine liner just a thin black pen and I'm going to draw around these black hexagons then that will just give us the outline for the white hexagons kind of look like the stitching on the ball but also give me somewhere so I know where I'm placing my next hexagons as well so I've done this over the entire circle um, and at first I was thinking oh there's not gonna be enough hexagons that are black it's going to look a bit odd but actually it worked out really well in the end once everything was glued down I just snipped off the edges of the black hexagons with my um, fussy cutting scissors just trimming off the edge there. I don't use the full football, but I'm treating it as if I am because I'm not sure which part I'm going to use. And I really like that we've kind of got that curve, that dimension on there. But to um, enhance this, I'm going to use a little bit of black ink. This is black distress ink, black soot. Brush it around the edges. This is just going to add a bit of shadow to the edges of the ball, make it look more like a sphere, a ball shape as well. I really liked this effect. I thought it looked brilliant when it was done and I'd have just used this on a card. Then I needed to create the kind of window, the aperture for my net, for my football net, for the um, yarn to go into. I didn't measure this, I just cut roughly around about a centimetre around three of the edges to around about maybe four inches into the card. And then I went around the edge of this poking holes at every one and a half centimetre. Now in hindsight I would have done larger gaps to create a bigger net only because it was very fiddly, very time consuming when I actually added the yarn. It took me most of the time to create this card doing this part, but um, you know, you live and learn. So one and a half centimeter spaces, I went all the way around that aperture, poking through into a self-healing mat. And then I got my yarn onto a darning needle and pushed through one of the top corners 
um, I pulled it all the way through I've got quite a large amount of yarn on here and um, not so much it was unmanageable to work with I had to bear in mind I had to keep pulling this through uh, this was enough for about half of the net in the end I had to tie off and use another length in the end but I'm just going to tape this end down I wasn't really sure how I was going to finish the inside so I've just added some low tack tape for now to hold that secure this was all trial and error I didn't really know where I was going with this at the time I made it up as I went along hence the voiceover on this video because I just didn't know what I was going to be telling you until I'd done it then I took a thin paintbrush. This is just a guide for me to kind of loop my yarn around, um, a bit like crochet, I suppose, in a way. Um, I then went sort of under the paintbrush, back into one of the holes in the top. It was a little bit hard to pull that through, but not too difficult. Um, and once I pulled that through, I just continued going under. It was a bit hard. I had to use my teeth actually on the darning needle <laughs> to uh, grab my needle pull it through the aperture round the paintbrush up into the next hole and I repeated this all the way along again the two uh, the, the toothbrush the paintbrush was just there as a spacer really to keep those loops in the right place and kind of similar tension all the way along Then when I got to the end I went through um, the last hole on the side so uh, I'm going on the side of the aperture here and for this next row coming back it was much quicker much easier because this one was kind of a straight row so uh, I actually ended up removing my paintbrush here um, but you'll see later on I do kind of leave the paintbrush in there for this row coming back on yourself but I'm just feeding it through the bottom of each of the loops so um, you can see they're just pulling all the way through along so that's kind of a straight line there but loose I didn't have it too tight in through the last hole and I just repeated that process so looping around the, the paintbrush and then um, all the way along on the next row so back and forth back and forth I mean I like I said I made this up as I went along I didn't um, know what I was doing here I kind of used a bit of crochet knowledge for looping around things you can do this in any pattern you want to you're just simply trying to add some yarn crisscross shaped here I think I overthought it a little bit but it, you know it kind of worked it looks really good in the end um, but I probably could have simplified this certainly by having larger holes larger spaced holes would have made this much quicker um, I mean you can by all means try and follow how I've done it as you can see here later on I used two paint brushes one I left in the loops previous um, so you can see the left to right running loops has got the paintbrush in then I've got the right to left going just straight across the bottom of those loops and now I'm going back left to right again going in the center of each loop under the paintbrush and then back up through the next one hopefully that kind of makes sense to some of you um, a little bit but like I say certainly there's got to be other easier ways of doing this but it was fun it was fun to try it out I really didn't know how it was going to look until I got right to the end there then at the end I just tied it off it happened to fall into the last hole which was perfect a double knot at the end again I just cut this off um, I wasn't sure whether I was going to tape it so I trimmed this one off and then I went back and I tied off um, the first one the first end then some grass just torn green cardstock um, I tore it first then measured it so it covered up the bottom of the net a little bit um, and just added a bit of black to again add shading around to sort of frame this so this again is just scraps of my card I didn't you cut into any really good cardstock for this card which was a bonus just using my scraps up just gluing the football on there you've kind of got dimension with the smaller net in the background the big football in the foreground there I really like that effect trim off the edge of the football which was kind of heartbreaking after all that work but you know I knew I was going to do that anyway then I cut some one centimeter strips these are going to be for the goal posts just to cover up where the nets are and kind of neaten up the edges a little bit didn't really need it too much I felt more down the sides than the top but um, lots of glue here just to secure this just wet glue it did it did neaten it up it did look quite good afterwards so again I probably should have inked those edges as well 
but um, I just used three, one for the top and two for each, well, one for each side. Then I used a Made to Surprise Alphabet die set um, and cut these really cool, sort of funky, modern looking letters in a blue cardstock. This is going to match the envelope. Um, and I'm spelling out the lad's name here, Blake. Um, you can put any sentiment you like, your happy birthday, have a great day, whatever it is. But I just chose to use his name, make it even more personal. And I finished with some brown distress ink and one of my textures brush stroke stamps. This has ink splats, but they just look great for kind of mud splats all over the card, the football, the goalpost. Finished off with a pale blue insert with happy birthday stamped in black. I've kept my happy birthday in the top third, really, um, because we've got a lot of names in our family to have to write underneath. <laughs> So that's the finished card. I hope you like that. Everything I've used is in the description below. Let me know what you think and will you be trying something like this out?